I own the most hated camera for 2019, Canon EOS R and it doesn't come with slow motion. On paper it comes, but let's be honest, nobody is shooting 120 in 720p, it's unusable. So I don't have the luxury of shooting my b-rolls in slow motion and because of that I had to get more creative. So in this episode we'll share with you my tips and tricks on how to make your b-roll interesting and sexy and at the same time filmed in 60 frames per second. Hey there, my name is Gabriel and let's be honest, shooting in 120 is epic. My iPhone can shoot even 240 and that is even better. When you have the possibility to shoot 120 frames per second, you can even avoid the use of gimbal because the footage will look so smooth. So if I would have the chance, I would use it, but I know that a lot of people out there are limited to shoot with 60 frames per second, so now let's dive. First, let's check some camera items which can boost your production value. The first item in the list is the ND filters. I started with the variable NDs and all of them, even the most pricey one, have polarization. I had a lot of problems with the variable NDs and now I'll show you how to test the polarization of the variable ND. The first thing, zoom the filter to the end. You don't even have to mount it to the camera. Usually you have to test it on a wide angle lens, so place on your camera 16 to 35. One important point about the camera settings, put the ISO on auto. After that, just place the filter in front of the lens without mounting it and just start slowly rotating. If there is some polarization, you'll see how some black lines are moving. Here is a demonstration clip. So I switched to hard variables. I'm using the magnetic ones from Freewell. As a hybrid shooter, it is very comfortable with the magnetic system. In the beginning, I had some doubts about it, but after a few months, I can really recommend it. Links for everything you can find in the description. Second, you can invest in a small RGB light. Controlling the light is the thing which will make your videos look higher quality. The small RGB can come very handy when recording videos inside. The one I have has some funny modes which allow me to experiment from time to time. In one of my recent shoots I recorded in my basement. There you can find amazing leading lines, but the light was horrible and I couldn't control it because it was with sensors. So I ended up taping the sensors so the lights don't go on while we are filming. I placed the RGB light in one corner and the result was amazing. So be in control of the light and try to make the boring everyday light more interesting. The thing which will improve the most your video production is to find interesting light. The sun is going brighter and brighter, I hope my exposure is correct. The next item on my list is the gimbal. Nowadays the gimbals are so cheap so you don't have the excuse not to get one. Gimbals are amazing for tracking shots for long takes but a gimbal will not solve all your problems. I usually film 50% of my content with a gimbal and the other 50 I do the handheld. Here are a few examples. When I record handheld, there are two accessories that I like to use. The first one is a top handle. It is very comfortable to walk around with it and it's very comfy to do a low angle shots. And the best part, it costs only 20 bucks. The second one is a camera strap, a Chinese copy of Peak Design. Somehow didn't want to spend 50 euros for a Peak Design strap. Sometimes I'm a very cheap ass. I use it often when running and gunning and I don't want to take the gimbal with me. It just gives me a little bit more stabilization. Now let's move away from the gear and go to the execution part. You have to make your bureau rich. Record as much as you can. You can always throw footage away but you cannot add footage which you didn't record in the bureau. There is nothing worse than sitting and editing and in some moment to realize that you forgot to record two pieces and your storyline is not perfect. It happened to me several times. 
So I follow a simple rule. When I record a bureau, I try always to record three types of shots. The first one is the establishing, showing the environment where the character is. Much better, oh, yeah. Before you I was just a shell, so stuck in the dark. The second type is my regular footage, what the character is doing. Let's say someone is opening a door. Here I'll try to capture minimum two angles, one tracking shot behind the person and one tracking shot in front of the person. In this way the bureau looks richer. The action what the character is doing is the same, so if you do a hard transition will be invisible, but you give the viewer a new perspective, more details and your video looks better. The third type of shot is to get some details. If you have a macro lens, that can be also very handy. Now, don't forget to bring variations of what you record. In my Filipino travel videos, many people complained that I was recording only the ass of my girlfriend. The worst part <laughs> is that they were right. Beach after beach, I did the typical follow me shot on the beach showing her butt. Detailed shots of how she walks in the water, some shots of her in the boat. If you want to check how you shouldn't record a travel bureau, go and check my Filipino travel videos. Now let's check some fancy things which will make your bureau look cool. There are three transitions I use all the time and you can use them in so many variations that the possibilities are endless. The first one is the lens cover. Here are a few examples. The lens cover can happen also more natural and not to be so visible, like in this clip. Here the transition looks very natural because of the movement itself. When you place the lid of the pot, your brain expects that the hand will go up and after that we are opening a cabinet and it's normal to be dark inside. The second transition is the wipe. This one is harder because to look amazing you have to plan it in advance. Here is the basic. In the end of the clip, wipe your camera. And in the beginning of the next clip, wipe the camera again. Here are two very simple clips for demonstration. After that, on post-production, just cut in the middle of the wipe. The wipe transition can happen in all directions, just make sure you're consistent with the movement. Top to bottom, top to bottom, left, right, left, right. Here are some examples. Next one is the hard cut transition. When I do a hard cut, or I'll cut in the action so the transition is invisible or I'll cut on the music beat. Now there are many variations of the hard cut transition, one of which is the match cut. Another cool transition is when you follow the motion. If two clips have the same movement, you can glue them together. Go. Go. Next thing you have to master is the speed ramping. We have a long drawn clip which we have to make more interesting. The idea is simple, we have to speed up the middle part of the clip. 
For that we have to find a good start and end point. After that we have to find how much to speed up the clip. Usually I start with 4 to 500 percent and check how it looks. I will continue increasing the percent till I see that the clip looks smooth. The thing which will bring everything together is planning. Sit and plan your bureau. That will increase the value of your bureau. It may take you one hour, it may take you one day, but sit and plan all the shots and transitions in advance. Only if you plan the bureau your skills will improve and after you have several planned and well executed videos, you can go on place and you can start filming awesome videos without spending a lot of time pre-planning. Now one bonus tip which mostly no one is giving, spend your time polishing the sound design. All the small sounds from the waterfall, from the engine of the car and so on, that brings the video to the next level. 50% of the information we absorb through the years, so give the viewer a nice rich environment. I post a lot of small bureaus on my Instagram, so don't forget to follow me there. Now, go press the like button, click the subscribe, hit the notification bell and see you in the next video. And, and in the comment section. I even don't shoot 60 frames per second, I shoot 50 because in 60 frames per second the lights are flickering. 60 frames per second is for USA electricity, NTSC and PAL standard.